What is up, everybody, and welcome to the Matt Pete Marketing Podcast. Today, I've got Rachel Richards on. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see her right there. Now, Rachel, she's only 27 years old. She's a former financial advisor. Rachel has been na uh, made a name for herself in the personal finance realm. And in 2019, she quit her job and retired with over $10,000 a month in passive income. That's amazing. She is the best-selling author of Money, Honey, and Passive Income, Aggressive Retirement. She's been featured on The Penny Hoarder and The New York Times and has been contracted to speak at colleges. Rachel's also a real estate investor with 35 rental units. That's a dream of mine. Her valuable money lessons have helped thousands of millennials work their way out of financial despair. She has, had, she has successfully done what no one's done before, made the topic of money management more fun, entertaining, and simple. That is awesome. An awesome intro, Rachel. Um, so I have just a lot of questions right off the bat, but I want to give, throw it over to you so you can say hey to everybody. Yeah, thank you so much, Matt. I really appreciate you having me on. I love talking about all things marketing, personal finance, passive income. So this will be fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. So this is the marketing podcast. So we're definitely going to talk about your marketing experience. And, you know, just to kind of get us rolling here a little bit with that, what would you consider to be your marketing specialty? I would say I have a few, but my specialty is probably just doing organic marketing on Facebook. That I love that because I don't like spending money. So, yeah, same, same. <laughs> so that's really cool. So organic marketing on Facebook, can you kind of break that down a little bit? So I kind of, so me and everybody else, I'm still trying to learn from all the professional marketers. What does that look like? Yeah, so for me, I do a lot in Facebook groups where I'm really trying to go in there and give people really good money management advice. And then sometimes, you know, I'll link my book. Sometimes I won't. You know, a lot of times if I am giving helpful advice, someone will just look at my profile or add me as a friend and they'll naturally kind of see my books from there. So I just try to go on Facebook, interact as much as I can. You know, I do have my own personal Facebook account and I have my Facebook page for my business, which is also linked to my Instagram. Instagram. So there's a lot of different ways I can post and sort of get myself out there on Facebook. Okay. So are you doing all this just from your personal account, like connecting with people, not through business account or anything? I do it through my personal account, but I do have my a business account as well. But pretty much the way I do organic marketing in terms of trying to get in front of new people is I post from my personal account. And then okay. on my business account, I will do more, you know, educational content and funny money memes because those are always really popular. And then I'll do a little bit of promotion there as well. Okay. That, see, how long does that take? Like, do you have like a set schedule per day or is it just... How, how yeah. Do you, so yeah. admittedly, I'm not the most organized about this, but I'm about to be, I'm about to download Buffer, which is a scheduling tool. So I'm going to be able to kind of time block better. And hopefully what I want to do is sit down like once every two weeks and plan out all of my content on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest for the next two weeks. And then it'll be a lot more hands off. Because right now what I'm doing is, you know, I'm just trying to do six social media posts per week. So I'm kind of doing it as I go, which I don't think is saving me a lot of time, I guess, you know, it's distracting every time you go on social media. So yeah. I am looking to clean up my process a little bit going forward. Okay. Yeah. Cause I've always heard people say that you like organic outreach on Facebook is how like I've heard people say that. And a lot of times it's just, it ends there and it's like, well, how do you get people organically? And they say, you know, comment in groups and that kind of stuff. And I've never been somebody to have much success with organic reach on Facebook. So that's interesting to hear. And I'm, I'm going to have to check out Buffer. Um, that's yeah, cool. bu yeah. Buffer comes highly recommended. And, you know, in terms of, of having success with organic reach on Facebook, it really comes down to how do you continue to get in front of people who don't know who you are? Because chances are, if you already have a social media following, those people know who you are. They may have already bought your product or service. So trying to promote to your followers it's, it might be a little bit redundant. So what I love about Facebook is that you can join new groups, you know, even groups that aren't related to your topic necessarily, and just get in there and add value. And then you're getting in front of people who don't know you. So that's the way that I've made it work is really through groups. Okay. Yeah. I love that. And I've recently, I'm, I know you saw the video, the OFA challenge that I'm doing right now, the one funnel away challenge, mm -hmm. that kind of group is super active. I love that group, but a lot of the groups I'm in, oh man, I joined one the other day for small business people and I just got inundated with spam messages from yeah. people and like, yeah, I'm not going to do business with those people. So is oh there my like, gosh, yeah. <laughs> if you had like one rule for 
you join a new group, you're trying to get in front of new people. What, what do you do when you join those new groups? Yeah, well, I would say there's one thing that people do that just makes me cringe. And that's when people are being really spammy and really promoting themselves hardcore. You know, I feel like we all have that friend from high school that joined an MLM and then she goes through <laughs> her whole friends list and messages everyone. And it's so annoying. And I think that's why MLMs have gotten such a bad rep. Um, but, you know, here's an example. I just went into a group recently and someone had asked a question and I posted about myself and, you know, just gave them a little insight into my background. And then there was a ton of follow-up questions. And I was just writing out really helpful responses and asked and answering everyone's questions. Well, someone from this group saw what I posted and messaged me and said, Hey, you know, I am an insurance person. Do you keep your business options open? That's what he said. And I was like, well, what do you mean by business options? And it basically turned into this long ordeal where he was trying to recruit me to sell insurance. And I was like, yeah, this isn't a good fit. I tell my platform and my readers to stay away from pushy sales people. So, but thank you. You know, I had to like tell him no several times and it was such a turnoff. And so don't be that person in a group. Like don't private message somebody. Don't, you know, comment and just try to sell yourself. It's super obnoxious. My rule, the way I approach Facebook groups and organic reach is you have to add massive value first. You have to approach any marketing situation by giving value first and helping people and educating and just, you know, adding a ton of value. And only then can you ask for something small in return. So that's the way you have to kind of mentally approach it. Give massive value, then you can ask for something small. Love that. Give first, then ask for something small later. That's that is the way that I wish everybody would do it because they, yeah. clearly, they clearly don't. Um, and one thing I love doing, like um, I'll send video responses sometimes to people. Like I had somebody recently, I was in a group and they asked how to do something. They were asking how to like add text on a PDF on their computer. So I just pulled up QuickTime on my computer and recorded like a screen, quick screen capture and sent that to them, like me talking directly to them. That's so, so smart and so helpful. Yeah. And it's like so quick as, as opposed to like, typing it all out and have them read through it. It's like, literally I showed them how to do it. Yeah. So that's something I've just recently started doing because I communicate better with video. So for me, that, that just helped me uh, be able to communicate quicker. <laughs> I yeah. I love that. Okay, Rachel, if you're starting a business today and you only had $1,000 in your budget, how would you spend it to get some more clients? That's a great question. Um, I'll, I can speak to this in two ways. Like what if I was starting a business today and then what would I do with my existing business? So it's so hard because if I was starting a business today, I'm so frugal. I, I really hesitate to invest money into advertising, which I know sometimes can hold me back. So I'm, I am aware of that flaw. Um, I almost wish I could clone myself and just pay somebody to go on my social media and do the things that I'm already doing, you know, going into Facebook groups, adding value. So that might be something I would consider is honestly just hiring a virtual assistant to do some of those marketing activities that maybe like I shouldn't be doing myself. So, so maybe just outsourcing some of the advertising that I'm doing is what I would, no, that, I would that's, say. For me, I think I see that as a form of advertising. You nail down how you organically market, like you said in your first question, and then you hire somebody to help you do that and just yeah. scale it, basically. Yeah. So maybe I should do that. This is a great conversation we're there having. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I would say, you know, if I'm answering that question for my existing business, this, this answer would probably be helpful to any authors out there, self-published authors that are looking to market their books. Um, I really don't do a lot of paid advertising at all for either of my books. And actually, so funny story, I published Money Honey, and the subtitle is A Simple Seven-Step Guide for Getting Your Financial bleep together. So it has a little cuss word in it. And I didn't know this at the time, but Facebook and Amazon do not allow you to do any paid advertising if there's like a cuss word in your book title. Oh. So I didn't know that. So I kind of, um, really limited myself there. So <laughs> money, honey, my first book, it's all been sold like organically word of mouth. It's done really well. Um, so I would say, you know, keep that in mind if you're a self-published author. And then the second thing is if I had a thousand dollars right now and I was looking to spend it on paid advertising, I would be trying to get on BookBub. So BookBub, BookBub. is a platform where authors can advertise their books 
and it is known uh, amongst the author community as being the best ROI. Like if you get a book bug deal, you are, it can change the sales trajectory of your book. So I've applied a couple times and I haven't gotten approved yet. It's super, super competitive, but I know their ads are anywhere from a couple hundred bucks to like a thousand dollars or more. So if I could, that's where I would put money towards is BookBub. Oh, wow. So what do they do? What does BookBub do to make I it just so think they have, drastically different? Yeah, I just think they have a really great following and email list, like thousands, millions of subscribers, basically. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of other book advertising platforms out there, but none of them are really effective. You know, I've tried some of them, but BookBub is like, it can take your sales from, you know, 10 books a, a day to like, the next day you sell a thousand books in a day. That's oh. what I've heard from people who've, oh who've had an ad. Yeah. So it's, it's like life changing. So that's what I try to do. Hopefully I'll get approved for one this year, but like I said, it's super competitive. So is it something you can keep applying for with the same, with your two books that you already have? Yeah, I think you can, I, I, there's like a timeline, you know, you can't just apply every single day, but it's like apply once every 60 days or something like that. Oh man, that's crazy. So do, yeah. you, do they tell you why you're not getting accepted? Um, not really. I probably could email them and ask for a little bit more detail, but so far it's been a vague, like this isn't the best fit at the time. So and I don't know. It's, and I have, you know, my books are solid in terms of reviews, like Money Honey has over 500 five-star reviews on Amazon. Oh. So like I have good books and, you know, good covers and everything. So I don't know. It's just, there's a lot of really good books out there too. So that's crazy. I've never heard of that, but yeah, if yeah. anybody out there is publishing a book, BookBub, check that out. And mm -hmm. anybody watching YouTube or anything, they can see your books behind you. They should definitely check them out. Money, Honey, and Passive Income Aggressive Retirement right there. So y'all can see the covers. So you know what you're looking for. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So what was the last book you read and do you recommend it? Um, I try to mix my reading up between like some fiction, mostly nonfiction that's oriented towards business ideas that I could implement for myself. But right now I'm reading a little something that's a little bit different. I'm reading the book Endurance by Scott Kelly. And he was the U.S. astronaut that spent a year on the space shuttle, which is like the longest period of time an astronaut has spent in space consecutively. So anyways, very, very interesting story. I, it has nothing to do with my business, but it is so, so cool. So I definitely highly recommend it. Cool. I heard about him. Whenever he got back, I, re I remember seeing that and I'll have to check that out. That's really cool. Is it on Audible? Do you know? I don't know. I bet it is because it's a pretty famous book, but it's so interesting. He has a twin brother who's also an astronaut. And part of this study was like they measured his twin brother in the U.S., you know, on land versus the changes in his body in space. And they were able to compare like the effects of space on somebody. So, what are yeah, the so odds very cool. That? I know, right? That both of them are like, yeah, let's go be ast astronauts together. That's just okay yeah it's a very inspiring <laughs> That's really story cool. okay so you've been marketing your books a lot you're a best-selling author but can you tell us a story of one of your biggest marketing mistakes a time when you yes. lost money or you tried to do something that just didn't work out lost a lot of time yeah, I would say um, for me, it was more about losing time. So I looked into earlier this year, I looked into hiring a social media manager. And at that point, I was like, you know, I'm spending a lot of time on social media. This might make sense to outsource. And I was doing a lot of research and you know, a lot of these social media managers are charging $500, $1,000, $2,000 a month. And that's a lot of money. You know, my, my book sales in February, I just had my first $7,000 month in book wow. profits, Congrats. which thank, that's you. Awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So like, to me, that's a huge deal. So to think of paying $2,000 a month just for one tiny aspect of my business, I was like, that's eating away at a lot of my profit. And the other thing I realized in doing my search is that and most of these people couldn't really give me a clear idea on ROI. So none of them could say, well, okay, if I'm investing $2,000 a month in, in this social media, are you going to guarantee that you can see at least that much more in sales for me in profits? And that's not really the way social media management works, honestly. So to me, once I started looking at the numbers, I was like, okay, I just don't think this is going to give me like a return on investment. And whenever I'm spending marketing dollars, I have to understand the potential potential ROI. And, you Absolutely. know, if I'm going to spend 20 bucks, 50 bucks, a hundred bucks, am I going to make at least that much back, if not more? And if the answer is no, 
then you really need to ask yourself, well, do I really need to spend this money? Can I really justify this? Sometimes you still can, but most of the times for me, I'm, I'm so frugal and financially oriented that I was like, yeah, I just don't think this is going to make sense. So it was just, it was a good learning lesson. I think social media management makes more sense for somebody who has, you know, a hundred thousand followers because, you know, right now I have maybe 5,000 followers in my platform. And if I had a hundred thousand, I'd still be paying about the same amount. It doesn't really make a difference in the social media manager's time invested, like how many followers somebody has. It's still the, it's the same amount of time. So I think I'll be able to justify it at some point in my business, but right now I won't be able to. So yeah, great learning lesson. Um, it was interesting to look at the ROI and understand a little bit more, but yeah, it was, it was a lot of months that I put into interviewing social media managers and then nothing ever came of it. So that was one of my mistakes that I've made. That's really good to know because that's one of the things that I've like, I've seriously thought about too, like outsourcing yeah. your social media because it takes it takes a lot of time. It yes. Does. Yeah. Um, are you on Instagram at all? Or yeah. You, so my Facebook? social media handles are Money Honey Rachel. So okay. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, Money Honey Rachel. Money Honey Rachel. Everybody check her out at Money Honey Rachel. Um, so just as a quick tool, because I was thinking about social media, I just started using something. Have you ever heard of Jim Edwards? No. So he does a lot of copywriting stuff and he's really good at copy. He just released a book called copywriting secrets. I'm reading through it right now, but oh, cool. he has a free tool. Um, let me, I'm going to see if I can find it real quick for you. Um, oh, there it is. I already got the URL pre typed in my Google uh, Chrome remembered it. So it's called hashtag scraper. So one okay. thing I always hated about doing uh, Instagram was finding the right hashtags. Yeah. So I'm going to send it in the chat to you so you can check that out just so you have it. But it's a, it's free. Sign up for it. And what you do is you go in, like you type in money and it goes through Instagram and finds the top like six pages of results for hashtags. Oh you my click gosh. Them and just copy and paste them onto your Instagram post. That is so helpful. Thank you. So hashtag scraper.com. Hashtag scraper.com. Oh, cool. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. I, awesome. I, I started using that like a week ago and I've posted more in the past week just because I don't have to worry about hashtags. It's been, <laughs> I love it's been it. really cool. That's awesome. So do you follow any other marketers or anything for inspiration? Yes. Um, Amy Porterfield is really awesome. She's so genuine. Like she's just fun to watch and she has this talent for being able to market without coming off as marketing herself. So I love that about her. Um, Russell Brunson is amazing. His books have literally changed my life. I think the first book I read of his was dot com secrets. And then I just, I think I'm about to read traffic secrets next. I have the audiobook. Um, so yeah. I love them. And then for, for people that are more specific to like self published authors. I follow Brian Cohen and Dave Chesson. Dave Chesson. All right. I'm going to check those two out. The first two, I definitely, Russell Brunson and Amy Porterfield are on my dream 100. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Cause I follow, I've been following Amy Porterfield for a long time now with the online marketing made easy. Definitely inspiration. Russell, I just found him back in March and have like just deep dived into his content. Yeah, I mean, he's an example of somebody that adds massive value for so free much. and then like has amazing sales funnel set up so that he makes money on the high end offerings. I mean, it's, he's a master. He really is. It's phenomenal. Um, I can't remember how we were talking about it during the recording, but just in case the OFA challenge, we were talking about that at some point, the one funnel away for everybody who doesn't know what that is. It's Russell Brunson's like online 30 day challenge. Absolutely amazing. Have oh, you that's ever done cool. It so that's Russell Brunson? I didn't yeah, even know that. Yeah, that's oh Russell Brunson. Oh my gosh, Brunson's well, I'm going to sign up. <laughs> oh, it's it's $100, and I wish I had the book here. Like, he sends you a book and an MP3 player with all of these different recordings on it and yeah. the work. It's, it's worth more than any class that I took in college. Yeah, see, it's Hands so down. funny. It, it speaks to how great he is because... I just the fact that Russell Brunson made it, I know that if I spend a hundred bucks, I'm going to get way more than a hundred bucks worth of value out of it. And that's how good he is. I'll go buy it. <laughs> it. Oh my God. And they say like, oh, take an hour a day. And no, you need, I would, I would give it at least two. Cause there's just, especially yeah. if, like you're mean, you're just starting this thing. Like it takes a lot. And they like identifying your ideal customer and like it, I mean, it walks you through everything, but if anybody wants to do it, uh, if you go to mattpeet.com, M-A-T-T-P-E-E-T.com forward slash OFA, mm -hmm. that's my affiliate link. If anybody wants to help me out, I get, so they charge $100 for the course. 
then if you want the physical materials, it's $19.95 to ship it to you. But if anybody joins through my link, that $100 you pay for the course, they just give that to me. So they get absolutely nothing. Yeah, they get nothing for people going through this course if you join through an affiliate link. Wow, that's so interesting. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. It's like, so on the sales page, it actually says their evil plan, air quotes, is to get you to a point where you can make money so well with ClickFunnels and get you to that point in your business that using ClickFunnels is a no-brainer and you want to stay with them. So That's literally cool. they get, even if you don't end up using ClickFunnels and don't end up building a funnel, the information there, I'm on week three, sort of week three today. And we're just now actually getting to the point where we need ClickFunnels, mm. like to like build a funnel. Uh, everything to this point has just been building an offer and learning how to build a business and everything else. So, I mean, it's, yeah, I'd use ClickFunnels, but it's not the main focus. It's not like just one giant sales pitch for ClickFunnels. Yeah. Uh, that's really definitely, cool. Definitely check that out. It's the best thing I've bought in a while. <laughs> That's awesome. So what's your favorite marketing tool? Um, there's a couple. So I would say number one is my spreadsheet. I, I mean, you, there's no point in spending money on marketing unless you're going to track it because you have to know what your ROI is. I've gotten, you know, sucked into things before and just kind of throwing dollars at places. But then what's the point? Because you don't know which one's working and you have to know, you know, if something's not making money, you have to know that so you can stop spending money on it and just focus on the things that are. So that's the, my biggest thing is my spreadsheet. I have one that tracks my Amazon marketing ads for my second book, um, Passive Income, Aggressive Retirement. So I track the profits. I make sure that my ads are actually profitable. And then I have another spreadsheet where I just track total book profits and I analyze all the different marketing I'm doing, um, which isn't a lot. Most of it's organic, you know, word of mouth type things, but that, that's just key. I think that's the, probably the biggest mistake new marketers make is kind of, you know, throwing their dollars at places and then not having a good system in place to track what's actually working. Um, so there's that. And then I already talked a little bit about Facebook groups, but I'll just go into more detail on how I use them to actually launch my first book, Money Honey. Yep. Um, yeah, so I was already in a couple of Facebook groups. This was well before I even came up with the idea to market my book or to write my book. And these groups, they weren't even necessarily about finance. One of them was actually more politically oriented, but it was almost all female millennials. And that was my target audience. So I was just looking for Facebook groups that were, you know, made, consisted of my target audience, female millennials. So I was in this group and anytime somebody would ask a money question, I would jump on the thread and I would say, hey, you know, former financial advisor here, here's what I think. And I would take some serious time to write out a really helpful, simple response. And people really loved that. And after enough times of doing that, if somebody had a money question, other people would start tagging me and they'd be like, oh, you need to ask Rachel Richards or, oh, Rachel Richards is our finance guru. She'll help you. And so I kind of became known over time as this finance guru in this group of like six or 7,000 female millennials. I was like the go-to person, which was really cool. And then when I actually started thinking of writing the book, I went into the group and I was like, hey guys, here's what I'm thinking. What do you guys think about this? And there were like hundreds of people that responded and they were like, yes, like Rachel, you have to write this. You make finance so easy to understand. Like, please write this book. I'll read it. So I obviously that was kind of me almost doing market research and I got a lot of really great feedback. And then I just tried to, you know, I continued to add value. I continued to keep people invested. I had people vote on my book cover, vote on my book title. So by the time I launched the book, there were thousands of female millennials that were emotionally invested in the success of my book and they were ready to buy. They were ready to share. They were ready to leave me a review. So it's almost like, you know, self-published authors, they always say, have a launch team, you know, have this group of people that are committed to helping you with your launch. It's almost like I had this informal launch team through this group. Like I didn't have to make my own or do any formal process and it worked wonders. And that's why Money Honey launched and had such great success from the get-go. That is awesome. There's so much in that. Um, so going back to your first thing, the spreadsheets, you said, I love the no point in spending money on marketing if you aren't going to track it. That That's my quote. I love that <laughs> from this oh, one. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah that, that's amazing. <laughs> so, and honestly, probably because it hit home because I have a video production business and I used to run ads for wedding videography all the time. And I didn't really, I could track it again, air quotes. Um, but I, so can you like briefly like break down, like when you're looking at your spreadsheets and you're trying to track 
are you just tracking like, okay, this is how much I spent on Facebook and this is how much I made? Or how are you breaking that down on your spreadsheet? Yeah. So Amazon marketing ads for my second book is really the only advertising that I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, so what you have to do is you have to know your baseline first. You have to know, okay, without spending money on marketing, what am I just making organically? So you have to know your baseline. Then once you start spending money on marketing, then you can look at the money you spent and you can look at the incremental revenue. So how much more are you making now over the baseline? And that's how you really understand the profitability because it's, it's interesting, you know, maybe you're making, let's just say a thousand dollars a month organically, and then you're spending $500, $500 on marketing a month and you're making an additional $400. So your revenue has gone from 1000 to 1400 Well, you might feel like, oh, cool, my revenues increase. But if you're, you're not actually, money. yeah, looking at those numbers, you're going to realize that you're actually losing money on that, prof on that ad. Huh. So that's something you would want to stop doing. Okay. So that's something I've always wondered is like how to track that. So how, do you, how long would you suggest like somebody's launching their book tomorrow and they're like already set to run ads? How long would you tell them to not run ads to get that baseline? Um, I would say, well, anytime you're launching a book, you're normally going to have a really big spike of activity in the first month and then things are going to die down. So you never want to use like your launch numbers as your baseline because they'll be a little bit skewed. Okay. So you want to make sure you have a solid month of, you know, you're after the initial excitement, you don't have marketing. I would say a month, but I, when I did this for myself, I didn't, um, I was trying to find my baseline and I actually was already doing ads at that point. So I had to turn them off and I didn't want to like lose a ton of momentum. So I ended up doing mine for two weeks and I was pretty confident in that baseline, but I would say a month would be even better. Okay, cool. So that, that's good to know a month without running ads, get your baseline, then you can run ads and actually track how profitable the ads really are. Like you said, you don't want to lose money on advertising because that's the opposite. Yes. <laughs> All right, Rachel, if you could go back to when you first started your business and give yourself one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, I love that you asked this question, Matt, because um, I don't want anyone listening thinking like, oh, wow, this girl like knows everything and she's perfect because I've had definitely my share of struggles and setbacks. And one of the biggest ones that I experienced is when I started writing Money, Honey. You know, at first I was excited. I had this initial great feedback. And then four months in, I actually quit writing my book. I was, by that point, I was telling myself things like, who are you to write this book? book, Rachel, who do you think you are? You know, this is going to be an embarrassment if I go through with it. My writing is total crap. So uh, these were the negative thoughts I was telling myself. And so I quit writing my book. And it wasn't until a couple months later that I sat down and had lunch with a friend and I told her about it. And she was like, Rachel, what are you, what are you thinking? You have to do this. You're really onto something here. You know, I can sense your passion. And so she kind of gave me the reassurance I needed to pick it back up. But the only reason I ended up going through with publishing it at all is because I told myself, if I can just help one person, that will make me happy. Like that is my only goal. So I went through with it and it, it resonated so well with people. I mean, it did better than I ever could have thought possible. And it's been very successful for the past two and a half years. And, you know, I got emails six months in, you know, four months in, six months in when people had finished reading my book, I started getting these emails every week and every day saying things like, Rachel, this book has changed my life. You know, thank you. I've paid off my debt because of your book. I finally have a savings plan. I would get emails like this, which just like they still give me goosebumps to this day. And it really wasn't until then that I realized wow, I actually wrote a good book. Like I, I'm adding value to people's lives. It took me so long to even get behind my own work. So I would say, and what I realized in hindsight is that that is called the imposter syndrome. That's what I was dealing with. And every entrepreneur is going to deal with the imposter syndrome at some point. But I guess the advice I would give myself is, to really stand behind my work, you know, really be confident because I was adding real value in changing people's lives. And just knowing that that was the fact, I should have done a better job at getting the word out there more and, and just being confident and marketing it. It's my job to market it and get it out there if it's something that's changing people's lives. So I would just say being more confident in that. I love that. The, and if you could only help one person, like, because I'm in the process right now of creating something. And I know a ton of people out there are going to be listening to this and watching this. They're in the same, same point, the imposter syndrome. And I, again, like you said, you didn't realize you had it. 
I've, I've been in that same point. It's like, I didn't, okay, yeah, this is imposter syndrome. I need to push through that because literally every successful entrepreneur like yourself talks about going through that point when you're just like, I don't even know if anybody's going to listen or who am I kind of thing. Like if you can change one yeah. person's life, that ripple effect that you're having now, I mean, you're a best selling author, that ripple effect you're having is huge, you know? So that's yeah, it's crazy. Amazing. I think just being aware that you will experience imposter syndrome if you're starting a business or if you're becoming an entrepreneur, like it'll happen. If you're aware of that and you can kind of expect it, then you can be a little bit more dismissive of it because I gave into those negative thoughts and I quit. Whereas if I was like, oh, this is a thing that happens to everybody, then I could have been like, oh, that's imposter syndrome. You know, screw that. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, man. So this has been an awesome interview dropped a lot of gold nuggets. Where's somewhere that so that people can go to find you, find your books and just kind of connect with you more? Yeah, thanks, Matt. So my books are on ebook, paperback, and audio on Amazon and Audible. And I would love to give your listeners my free passive income starter kit, where I what? do talk a lot about a lot of different marketing resources. Um, so I talk about, you know, passive income, three deadly mistakes to avoid, lots of free resources and tools in generating passive income streams, such as, you know, self-publishing a book. So if anyone wants to download that, they can go to moneyhoneyrachel.com slash bonus moneyhoneyrachel.com slash bonus. Yeah. We'll have that in any description that this uh, episode is uploaded to. And if you want to find it, go to mattpeak.com. I'll have it linked up on your episode show notes page there. Um, man, that's an awesome bonus. I didn't even know you were going to do that. That's okay. phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. moneyhoneyrachel.com forward slash bonus. I'm going to get off. And remember, marketing matters. See you later, guys.